I'm gonna get that. This is the one I wanted. Mike Shinoda co-founded the band Linkin Park, one of the best-selling acts of the 21st century. One thing, I don't know why, it doesn't even matter how hard you try. All my first beats were sampled off of vinyl records. Lately, he's sold a lot of vinyl records, and he likes to buy them. Dude. <laughs> Now that's what I call rock. He's not alone. Vinyl albums outsold CDs last year for the first time since 1987 to the tune of $1.2 billion. In today's digital era, people can hear hundreds of millions of songs anywhere. And yet vinyl, expensive, immobile, and left for dead, is booming. It was kind of like, well, yeah, that's never coming back. I was wrong. I didn't foresee it. No physical formats ever came back until this one did. Here's why this antique format is coming back, both in spite of and because of the digital music revolution. In the beginning of the beginning, around the very early part of the 20th century, there were wax cylinders that carried a sound recording. Thomas Edison's phonograph introduced recorded music to the masses. Eventually, it used discs like this. These little black pellets are ultimately melted down and it becomes a biscuit that gets pressed into a record. Mark Michaels is the CEO and owner of the largest press in America, United Record Pressing in Nashville. Back in the 60s and 70s, when vinyl was really the only format that was, was relevant, um, and it was the core existence of United, it was a very, very busy place. But the format had its limitations. And you couldn't really listen to it on the way to work or while you were doing anything else. And so CDs were far more convenient. In 1987, CDs outsold vinyl records for the first time. We almost exclusively listened to CDs at the time. And vinyl, we thought of it as like that was an old people's thing. The format hit its lowest point in 2006 as iPods helped digital music take over. When I bought the company in 2007, uh, it was a much smaller business. We were 38 employees at the time. Music lovers had nearly unlimited options. Vinyl seemed dead. Nobody thought vinyl was going to come back, except for the hardest of the hardcore. But in the early 2010s, it did. We could ask the question, why did that happen? All of the music that has ever been recorded is available to almost all of us on our phones. There was something missing in that experience. The album isn't just about the music. The answer lies in the way we express fandom. I think a lot of fans see buying things from their favorite artists as keeping those artists going. Meanwhile, United watched demand skyrocket. We grew to 90 to 100 people. We went from running one and a half shifts to three shifts. We did everything we could to accommodate the growth. It cost about the same as a black t-shirt at a concert and less than a hoodie. And it contains the actual music and beautiful graphics and photography and lyrics and other stuff. And so for many fans, especially young ones, they consider that to be a pretty good trade. Linkin Park's 2023 reissue of their album, Meteora, sold more than three times as many vinyl copies as the 2020 reissue of Hybrid Theory. The CD sales of Hybrid Theory 20th anniversary were around 13,000-ish. The vinyl was around 3,000-ish. And by the time we got to Meteor two years later, it flip-flopped. To jump from one format so heavily weighted to the other is, in a couple years' time is pretty substantial. And those substantial vinyl sales are helping the artists' bottom lines. On-demand streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music and Amazon and, and so on are paying out something well under a penny a stream. Artists are making significantly more on a per unit basis from record sales, and it stands to reason, right? I mean, today, a vinyl record is gonna cost uh, somewhere between 25 and $30 per disc. And many fans prefer the sound of vinyl. There's more life to it. It draws me in. I don't get tired of it. I want to listen to it more. 
if I got a record at like a garage sale or something and it's an actually it's an old record with dust and scratches and it's got that sound, then to me it's a really different experience. While vinyl is rebounding, revenue from physical formats made up just 11% of recorded revenue in 2022. Vinyl's continued growth isn't guaranteed because records are really hard to manufacture and most machines are basically antiques. These are some of our legacy landed presses, again, 50 to 60 years old. And one of the challenges with these presses is, you know, they break. And that can create a backlog for artists and labels. Lincoln Park is not like a, a, a fair comparison because the label does prioritize our projects. Our wait time to get the vinyl done was six months. So I have to imagine for a lot of other artists, it's a lot. Uh, slower. It's very, very difficult for an independent artist or for an independent label to schedule the manufacturing and release of a relatively small run of vinyl with great precision. But the industry is catching up. New equipment is finally being produced. Mark just had 26 new presses delivered from Sweden. Over the last two years, we've been putting this together. It's an $11 million project. Now, United presses 60,000 records a day and has 234 employees. Despite the challenges, some industry professionals think the format is here to stay. As long as there is demand for a bespoke analog way for a consumer to connect to an artist, vinyl will continue to be a significant and growing part of the business. I don't know that it'll stick, it'll beat CDs or beat other formats forever, but for now, at least people know that when they're buying an album they love on vinyl, like they're buying it for a reason, it's a keepsake, it's a collectible, uh, you know, that's more of the mentality.